How are we going to compute all the generalized eigenvectors of a matrix? Let us start with some good news here. They do not come alone, but they do come in sets, so-called cycles. So if you have found one, you can immediately find a whole cycle. How? And what do we mean with a cycle? That is not what you will see in this video. So let A be some large matrix, n times n's matrix, uh, with some eigenvalue lambda. Can have more eigenvalues, don't care at the moment, just some eigenvalue lambda. And let B now be the smallest integer such that A minus lambda i to the power of B times Vp equals a zero factor. Uh, then we know, of course, that Vp is a generalized eigenvector of A. And let P be some number like 10 or so, a bit, bit, bit bigger. Don't, don't care what exactly, but some bigger integer. And it's the smallest one. Then we know now a few things. First of all, a minus lambda i to the power p times v is the smallest integer such that you get zero. So if you compute like a minus lambda i to times vp, so with one or with two or with three, or with p minus one times vp, you get something which is non-zero. So that's the first thing you know, just because we assume that this p here is the smallest integer, such that you get zero there. Then we can uh, do the following trick. Uh, uh, we, if, we, if we have our vp, we can compute the vp minus one by computing a minus lambda i times vp. Well, you know that this is in some non-zero factor. So you have a vp minus one, which is some non-zero factor. Moreover, if you multiply now left and right by a minus lambda i to the power of p minus one times this vp minus one, then you get the, your uh, a minus lambda i to the power of p minus one times vp minus one on the left, and a minus lambda i to the power of p minus one times another a minus lambda i times vp on the right, which gives you the zero factor. So that you see this vp minus vp minus one is not a zero factor. And you also see that it is in the null space of a minus lambda i to the power of p minus one. So this vp minus one is also a generalized eigenvector. So you started out with vp, you compute uh, a minus lambda i times this vp, you get your vp minus one, and that is also a generalized eigenvector. And you can continue this trick, of course, by multiplying your uh, vp with a minus lambda i squared. That gives you your vp minus two for the same reason, again, because of this, this first uh, part, it's a non-zero factor. And if you now multiply with a minus lambda i to the power of p minus two, you get zero factor. So this vp minus two is also a generalized eigenvector. And uh, you can, uh, instead of computing like a minus, a minus lambda i squared times vp, it's usually easier to compute to use your vp minus one and to compute i minus of the i times vp minus one. So you start with your uh, vp, you uh, multiply it with a minus of the i, you get your vp minus one, you get a, another generalized eigenvector, and you, uh, con com uh, you can continue this process. So you get the vp, vp P minus one, until you are at p1. And this gives you a so-called cycle of p generalized eigenvectors your vi, so what you in fact have is then your vp pre-multiplied with a minus lambda i to the power of p minus i, so i is then 1, 2, 3, and so, and so on. Uh, this vp is, say, the initial factor, called the initial factor, even though it's put last, written last in the sequence. And this v1 is where you eventually uh, end up with is a minus lambda i to the power of p minus 1 times vp is called the terminal factor. So it's written first that it's called a terminal factor. And notice, by the way, that this V1 is an eigen, a, a normal eigenvector. So what we uh, have then is a cycle of P vectors, the uh, initial vector Vp, ending with the terminal vector V1, which is an eigenvector. And if you multiply with A minus lambda i, you go from Vp to Vp minus 1, Vp minus 2, 
and so on until you are at v2 and then multiply again you get v1 and if you multiply a v1 with your a minus and i you get the zero vector because this was an eigenvector so in one go uh, you, uh, if you have this one uh, uh, initial vector you get at once p generalized eigenvector so really a lot uh, so my theorem uh, those factors in the cycle are independent of course looking for independent eigenvectors and how can you uh, see that well that's uh, actually not so difficult I write down the definition of independence c1 v1 plus cp vp equals zero does it have non-trivial solution well uh, multiply with a minus left i to the power p minus one uh, then uh, all uh, factors are mapped to zero express except for this last one so you get cp times v, uh, uh, a minus left i to the power p minus one times the v1 equals zero so that means a cp has to be zero and uh, using this you can do it for all the other ones as well so we multiply with a minus left i to the power p minus two shows that cp minus one is zero and so on and so forth so in this way you can show that all these coefficients here are zero which means that your generalized eigenvectors from your cycle are nice and independent <laughs>